All right, so it's been a little bit since I've made a video, <clears throat> especially in my car anyway. Um, trying to get an update here. I've blown my head gasket, uh, ran a little bit lean, and uh, popped my gasket, burned, my, burned a hole in my cylinder head, and scorched the top of my block. And uh, got all that running back together, and uh, blew up my rear main seal, and um, or at least the uh, the plate around that, uh, not the rear main seal itself, but actually the plate that's held to the block blew the gasket out. So, so anyway, um, what I'm doing right now, I've got my transmission out. Figure while I'm doing that, I'd upgrade to a. Uh, better torque converter. I've uh, spoken to uh, Adriana Noonan. I know she's using uh, Florida torque converter. I believe that was the name of the place. I can't remember. I was going to go with that, but after some, some talking over with some other guys, I decided to pull the trigger on a precision. Got with Jeff Bush. He got me a number six, so I'm going to try that. So I uh, figured I'd make this video. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of what's got to be taking place to actually do a uh, auto conversion because this was a five speed this was originally a uh, five speed front wheel drive car to begin with and uh now it's an all-wheel drive auto converted 2g so uh, first gen's probably a little bit easier second gen's pain in the rear so anyway just want to show you some of the things that takes place i've got a six bolt in here which takes even more work uh, as opposed to a uh, seven bolt where you just swap the auto parts so I guess we'll get into it. So first things first, torque converters. To my knowledge, I, uh, I got this one from a guy with the transmission and uh, told me this was a restall converter. He'd bought it from somebody else though, so just going word of mouth, maybe it is a restall. I have no way of knowing, but apparent difference, as you can see, the color is not going to make a difference, but you can see the number of pads that this one's got got eight pads going all the way around it where this one's got four um so from my reading and research that the bolts can come out and uh you want to use some red loctite on these but when you've got eight of these it just dis it displaces the torque across of them a lot better uh, i guess better job of keeping those from coming out so um so that's one thing i'm happy about with the precision uh, when I got this, it did come with eight bolts uh, to come with it as far as a kit. But um, <clears throat> I have eight bolts I bought from the dealer uh, just for when this day may come. And here it is. So um, first things first, when I got this, I had paint all around all around here. Uh, I went ahead and took a, a drill with a uh, wire wheel that was kind of in a shape of a cup. Put around it. You could probably use some sandpaper or something. But I didn't want to have any uneven wear as far as sanding. So uh, that did a pretty good job in itself and made sure I didn't have any paint on any of the pads here. So, uh, so that's good and taken care of. I won't have any painted surfaces there uh, in that regard. So um, <clears throat> this one, even with the nitrous, was limiting me to about 3,500 RPM. Uh, I don't know what the limit is on this one, but people are telling me that I could basically get whatever I want. And I'm going to have to limit it with the two-step and and uh, ECM link, uh, which is what I'm personally using for tuning. So, so being that I'm going with the six bolt, um, had to get this Kigley kit. Uh, it's got this little spacer here. Uh, I don't know what the difference is between using a seven bolt and a six bolt. I just know that with the six bolt, you need the spacer plate. And this, if I don't know how well you can see it, but going across from that side to this side is about three quarters of an inch or so. Um, so that causes some problems there because you're spacing it out this way a little bit further, you're pushing the transmission towards the passenger side of the car. Um, but the kit also does come with this flex plate, which is nice because it's for one, it's thicker. Um, I had it just sitting in there, uh, but, um, comes with the surface for the eight pads, it's thicker surface. So it's not going to be real, um, flimsy. Um, I have gotten these Nordlock washers. Mine are a little bit bigger in diameter. Uh, there's a size chart that I'd seen. Mine was a little bit bigger than the one that you could have gotten, but the other one would have been a little bit smaller uh, for the bolt head. These aren't causing me any problems. They're just a little bit wider. But anyway, uh, do anything I can to help keep the bolts from backing out. Uh, excuse all my wires. Uh, but anyway, 
it's not the cleanest under the hood, but I guess the job done. So, but anyway, um, use a lot of red Loctite to keep the bolts down. Um, I believe those are stock flywheel bolts, I believe. One thing you have to do as far as the transmission conversion, if you are doing it, whether it's six bolt, seven bolt, the, the uh, alignment dowel that goes in the, uh, in the crank, you got to pull that out. I had to take a pair of uh, vice grips and get a good grip on it and pull that sucker out. And uh, that's all I had to do there. And then this would go on because this doesn't have a hole for the alignment dowel. So you've got to pull that alignment dowel out. Uh, so that's one thing you had to do. So basically the the spacer and then the Kegley flex plate uh, to bolt up to the torque converter. So so I almost forgot I was, I was editing uh, all my videos all together to make one long video. And then I realized uh, this part, which is kind of important to, that I don't need to be missing i've already got the transmission in the car so uh kind of hard to show you that one i'm definitely sure as heck not pulling it back out just show you this little step but this is a little rear plate that goes over the rear main seal or, or the back of the block this is where the where the rear main seal is uh, i'm not sure if this is uh just a six bolt in a 2g issue or seven bolt or if it's just uh with the kiggly flex plate i'm not sure but important step i know this video is mainly just for the parts that you need just so that you know what's needed for the conversion in that regard not necessarily a how-to uh, but this one i don't want everybody getting pissed at me because i didn't mention this one little detail but one thing i would suggest once you got everything put in um, and you're about ready to bolt up the flex plate just do something simple put it up on the back of the crank and spin it and make sure it's not hitting here okay on mine and i believe even on kigley's website he makes mention to grind the little ears right here because what's going to happen if you don't and you forget that one little step you're going to be having a bad day because you're going to have everything bolted in go to fire it up and it's going to be hitting making contact right there which would not be a good thing so simple step just remember to try and grind these ears and you can simply just check make sure if you got clearance just by setting it up to the back of the crankshaft without actually having to bolt it down and just spin it on the back side of the crank and look and see how much clearance you got. Make sure you got enough to where it's not going to be making contact. So just want to make sure uh, I, I didn't leave out that one important step because I don't want anybody having a bad day and pointing at fingers at me because I didn't include it in my video. So it's, it's been pointed out. So now you know. Now this is my rear mount. This is a stock mount. Um, all I did had a bunch of... Uh, spot welds in it and as you can see I drilled them out um, I believe here 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 and there I drilled those out and basically all I did I moved it over that way exactly three quarters of an inch because that's how much my spacing was going to be for the flex plate because the whole transmission is going to move this way and if you don't adjust this somehow you're not going to be able to mounted in there very well so um i've got a urethane kit in here if it was uh stock it might work but who wants stock if you're doing all that so um anyway you could probably i'd made some solid ones which would do the do the job as well but uh urethane mount here works well um but i just moved it over three quarters of an inches uh, welded it down painted it all black and get the job done um uh, was it perfectly in there? Uh, we'll go here over here to the back side of the transmission. Now the auto, you have to have this bracket here, which comes with the auto that does not come with the, the standard. As far as the transmission or the passenger side mount that goes on top of the transmission, um, this goes on top, you have to have that. And I believe the bracket here, I believe this is specific to an auto. I can't remember exactly. Um, but what I did here, as you see, because again, the transmission is getting pushed this way. I've got to have everything going that way as far as mounting so that it'll fit correctly. Um, what I did, I used a three quarter inch, uh, I think this is a wood drill bit. I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, this is what I have is exactly three quarters of an inch. I went straight directly three quarters of an inches over from from here went from the very edge I went three quarters of an inch over 
The diameter is a little bit thinner than this hole right here. I just hammered that in there. Had some people ask, don't I worry about it pulling over here? Well, being that everything's being pushed this way, this, this uh, pin right here is not going anywhere. It's gonna be getting pushed that way the entire time. So uh, not a problem there. Now when I, on, when I was taking this transmission out, it did get pushed over here because I was putting a bunch of force on it that way. I just took it out and hammered it back in there. <clears throat> not a problem. So um, there is a guy, I can't remember his name. I have to see if I can find his name. On Facebook but sells uh, sells some mounts I believe for the rear mounts and I can't remember if he sells this one or not um, which helps as far as the conversion if you've got a seven bolt probably don't have to go through this hassle because you may not need that that spacer plate probably just bolt it right in you're good to go of course you would need the uh, this mount right here um, and the stock rear mount you might be able to leave it alone the the driver's side and the front mount, those are completely stock. Didn't have to do anything with either one of those mounts. I was able to leave those alone. So Now this is the passenger side axle. This is from a manual. If you could get an auto, great. Um, I didn't have an auto, so I just used my manuals. Um, you could probably either cut a notch in it around each side. I didn't want, want to worry about cutting it and have my balance off or anything. All I did, I screwed a uh, hose clamp to it and had to actually use this and tighten it down real tight because if you do it with the screwdriver and you go to use the pry bar to go up against here to pop it out of the transmission, uh, it's kind of a pain. I actually dropped the transmission with the axle in it, but that was a real pain. Um, because it's having to go over the subframe and I had to clear that. So I popped this out after I got it out. Um, but you can either get an auto axle, you can either clamp it like I did, which is kind of a pain. It was kind of pushing it. If you, as you can see, it's kind of pushing it to the sideways, uh, to the side there. Um, you have to get it as close to the transmission when you clamp it in as possible. I had to get it as close to right here so I could use this bolt right here and pop it out with the uh the clamp around it just a tidbit of advice there just in case but if you get the auto the difference is i believe it's got a little notch in it already so you don't have to really uh, have to you know jerry rig it or anything and uh that works wonders if you've got an auto but i don't have that so obviously this is what it did so I don't know if you get don't know if you guys can see it, but I have a Ben M shifter. I've no, I've got it in some of my other videos. That is my shifter. Um, this is what I'm using. I'm not using a T TCU in my car. I also have a Force 4 shift box over here. It's a little bit dark, so you guys can't see it. Uh, you don't have to use the TCU, but you're gonna have to manually shift if you don't have it. Uh, I don't have the TCU. I don't mind manually shifting, uh, more entertaining to me anyways. If I didn't have a uh, the way to manually shift it, I probably wouldn't have gone auto. So that's the thing that won me over to going to an auto uh, because I normally think they're boring. Um, just hitting it and driving, going, it's not very exciting to me. But I can manually shift it with that or use the shift box going down the track and let it do all the shifting for me. So I've got two options So um, in that regard, at least with the the uh, force four box uh, it's going to be more consistent because it's going to be doing the same shifts every single time probably better for uh, track racing so. this little piece right here this little doohickey the little bracket here had to get that from uh, morrison fabrications uh, that comes with my bnm now with a stock auto shifter i believe it's got two cables i can't remember with the bnm it's got one cable that comes with the kit um, this is, you have to have this cause it's in a different location, I believe. And the, and the, the, uh, cable is a little bit different, but, uh, this bolts in and made the setup or the conversion perfect. So, uh, that was definitely well worth it. Uh, if I remember right, it was probably right around 50 to hundred bucks, somewhere around there. I can't remember, but, um, definitely worth it to have that. If you can get it from them, highly re recommend them folks. Uh, it came with that piece and this little piece right here. So. Uh, just for future reference. 
All right, so if y'all can see this, I'm up underneath my cart or from the side. This is the this is the intermediate shaft here. I believe this has to be an auto, so I do believe you have to have an auto shaft. I know I had to swap mine out, and of course my stock CV shaft. I don't know how long these uh, will last me with the power I'm trying to put down before I have to go and upgrade to some uh, stronger axles, but I'm gonna rock with what I got at the moment. But Anyway, this piece right here, if you can see it, I know it's kind of dark under here, but this is the bracket that would normally be stock, but this is an aluminum piece I'd got from Jeff Bush. I believe it was uh, maybe a little over 300. I can't remember the exact price on it. And basically what it does, it just pushes the intermediate shaft that way, about three quarters of an inch. Um, if you don't have that, then the intermediate shaft isn't gonna go all the way into the transmission and it's not gonna, um, be able to be sealed up because it's not going all the way in and you will leak transmission fluid all over the ground. Uh, learned that one from experience. So um, IPT transmission, they sell a seal. It's a brand new seal with a couple of spacers behind it, which pushes the seal out a little bit this way. Um, I had purchased it, I think with shipping and all, it was around 50 bucks, I believe. Um, I didn't use it though. I'd already had this, uh, bracket here i thought i needed both i didn't realize that i only needed one or the other i have no experience with the one from my pt transmission so i can't really give any feedback i had sent it out to uh, one of my facebook guys uh of course ups lost it so that's gone but uh so i don't even have any feedback from him so sorry um Ooh. but anyway um sorry i got a little helper right up here in case you hear her yawning but anyway um but anyway, uh, that is one of the things you'll need, um, the shaft and also maybe the bracket or possibly that seal uh, in that regard. So um, I know it's kind of pricey, but you know if you're trying to convert to auto, um, that's something you need. Now, that's only really needed if you're doing a six bolt uh, and a 2G. If you've got a stock um, seven bolt, you may not need that bracket, but you do need the shaft because I, I believe it is a different length uh, so just keep that in mind, uh, depending on what you're trying to do there. All right, one other thing you'd have to have, you have to have this piece right here, which plugs up to the top of the automatic transmission. Had to wire that in. Um, uh, Kegley has it on his site. It was just a few of the wires. If you can see a lot of the wires I didn't even use. Um, I think it's for your second, first and second gear. And then third gear has no power. And then I believe the blue wire here is the, the power wire. And I can't remember what what one of these third wires go to. I don't even have the reverse light hooked up. You can have that done. But basically to show y'all, that plugs in right here. So just in case you're wondering why you've got that. If you don't have that, it's not going to work. And then this right here plugs into the other, other half of that. So let me go over here and grab that one more time. This goes into the transmission. And then this goes into that plug on the front, which sends the power down here into the solenoids. And the, uh, I can't remember the name of the piece that's down in here, but has a solenoids where it does all the shifting for you um, in that regard. So it gives it the power. So uh, one other thing too, I've gotten this little, this wonderful little device right here, because autos are heavy, especially in a 2G, it is not fun. This is a, uh, this is just a little motorcycle jack. All it is is a little flat panel that it sits down on. And you've got this little piece right here to uh, make it go up and down. I think I paid right about a hundred bucks or so for that thing. It's got the jack inside and it's got the little dolly that it, that it sits down in, so it keeps it nice and flat. And I have been using an engine hoist uh, this has been a lot more convenient for getting this out already. And I'm sure it'll be a whole heck of a lot easier getting it back in. So if you get something like that, lifesaver because these things are heavy. So do not want to be having to have one of these fall on you if you're on your back. I uh, definitely don't want to be having to manhandle it up in there and be breaking your back. So uh, just another tidbit of advice there if that helps out. <clears throat> but that's basically everything. Uh, that I can think of right off hand for the auto conversion. Uh, oh, and the uh, the transfer case. Sorry, it's a mess up in there. I had my, oh yeah, and I had a oil cooler with the fan on the back of it that I've got wired up uh, with my, my uh, lines going to it. Uh, I forgot my lines fell down 
got oil all over the ground so got a big old mess to clean up uh, in that regard but you definitely got to have an auto transfer case the drive shaft bolts up just the same as whether it's a manual or an auto in that regard so uh, anyway hope that helps out some uh, i know some a lot of this is on the uh, either on some of the forums or the facebook groups uh, a lot easier trying to get all in one location as far as the video in case that helps uh, in case you can see that little red cable there that's the cable that goes to my bnm uh, you just have to make it adjust it uh, adjust the cable once you get in so it's shifting in the right spot but uh, anyway hope that helps up some or helps out some if i'm missing anything you guys uh feel free to let me know in your comments i'm thinking i'm basically covering everything this is a 2g transmission i think some of the first gen guys do go with the second gen as well i can't remember the reason why uh, first gen will not go in a uh, second gen, but a second gen will go in a first gen, in uh, case that helps. So um, I have a few upgrades in here. I've got a welded center diff. I have a upgraded Kigley six pack clutch disc. Um, I've got a upgraded shift kit in here with upgraded springs, uh, some port, the porting job, uh, valve body, that's what it's called, the valve body in here where it's got the solenoids that I was mentioning a moment ago. Um, but it's, it's got the upgraded um, shift kit in it, uh, and then IPT transmission has an upgraded kit over that. I guess where it upgrades two of the springs in there. So um, did everything myself. I'd I'd never messed with the uh, automatic before, um, but anyway, um, totally kicked my butt. I don't want to have to do it again. Definitely not an automatic transmission expert. But anyway, hopefully some of this guy's helped. Uh, if I'm missing anything or if I'm getting something wrong, guys, feel free to comment in the in my comments below. Uh, hope y'all have a good one. Until next time, that's it for this one.